In this screencast and the next, I'm going to discuss integration in polar coordinates. In this first screencast, I'm only going to consider the geometrical aspects. I'm not going to worry about what function I'm integrating over or actually carrying out any integration. I just want to set up the limits of integration. So in other words, in all these cases, what I'm going to imagine is I imagine that I have some given function in polar coordinates that I want to integrate over some domain. And here I pre-sketched some various domains, omega. And I simply want to set up, practice setting up the limits of integration for these different domains. So that's our goal. So let's um, let's just do it. So in this first case, let's think about what this is. This actually is a polar rectangle. Um, so let's just see if we can write it down. So omega will be the set of all r and theta. And what do these, well, excuse me, such that, and what do they satisfy? Well, hopefully you can see here that, uh, uh, well, let's do r first. This domain goes all the way to the origin, so r goes from the origin to 4, and that's a circle of radius 4. You're supposed to understand that from this sketch. So it's simply r goes from 0 to 4. And so it's not to collide with the next one. I'll write the, the theta part down. And what about theta? Well, this is theta equals 0. Is this um, this right here? Actually, I can do it. This is theta equals 0, and it's going to swing around how much? Well, that's um, uh, 3 halves pi. Quite a simple case. So theta will be between 0 and 3 pi over 2. So as I said, it's a polar rectangle. That's to say, r is between two fixed limits and theta is between two fixed limits. Oh yeah, so let me just, so finally, if we, then we're going to write down the integral. If we had uh, f, or we were going to actually integrate, I might as well put theta on the outside, naught to 3 pi over 2. r will go from naught to 4. f of r theta, and don't forget the r, dr, d theta. All right, so that's uh, given an f and the ability to integrate. This is um, how you would integrate this function over this domain. Let's go do the next one quickly. Slide this over a little bit. All right, so here we have, again, it's going to be, again, a polar rectangle. Uh, what does r go between? It's, again, you're meant to understand these are, these are arcs of circles, so that's uh, radius 1 and radius 3. So pretty clearly, omega will be the set of r thetas such that, I'm just going to write it down here, uh, yeah, write it here, r will be between 1 and 3, that's clear, now theta. Here in this case, you want to choose polar coordinates in which, uh, not between theta between 0 and 2 pi, that will be awkward, you want to choose polar coordinates between um, probably those that go from minus pi to pi. I'll just remind you, back in the lecture notes at the end of chapter one, I discussed briefly polar coordinates. In any case, it's something you uh, should have learned when you learned polar coordinates is this non-uniqueness in the choice of theta. And working from, working with thetas um, from, uh, in this case, you go from minus, this minus pi on two to pi on two is perfectly good. And that's uh, the way you should treat this problem. So that's what we're going to do. Theta will go from minus pi on two pi on 2. Again, hopefully I haven't made a mistake so far, so let's integrate. Now just for fun, since this, um, since neither of these depends on the other one, I'm going to put, just put r on the outside now, just to be different. It doesn't, uh, it wouldn't be very natural to do that, and you probably wouldn't do it um, without good reason, but I just thought I would do it. In fact, I think I regret doing it, but I'm going to continue. And the reason I regret it is because now I'm going to have to put my d theta here and then my dr. But anyway, there you go. I believe that is correct. And now the third case. Now, so if you saw this, you probably, uh, and you weren't told to do this in, in polar coordinates, you probably would have just gone directly to Cartesian coordinates. And that wouldn't have necessarily been wrong. Uh, however, depending on, the, uh, on this function, it, you might actually prefer to integrate in polar coordinates here. And perhaps we'll see some of this later when we actually do some integration. In any case, uh, don't be afraid of this. This geometry is not so bad in polar coordinates. And let's see, it is no longer a polar rectangle, however, so let's write r of theta such that, now let's, um, before filling this in, let's just look here. So theta, theta is the easy one. Theta will go, I'm gonna draw my little ray here, I hope you can see it. All right, so it, stop, it starts here, that's theta equals zero, and I'm gonna swing up. This point here is meant to be uh, the point two two, from which you deduce that that angle there is pi on four. So theta will go from um, naught to pi on four. So let me put that here. I need to put it I'm going to put it over here. 
so that's easy. Now, however, R is now depends on theta, and this is just like these type 1 and type 2 integrations we did before. I'm not going to give this a name as a type 1 or type 2. It's just that one of the limits of integration now depends on the other. So this is now between these fixed limits, um, but the R variable will uh, depend on theta. So let's um, continue in this red. I hope you can see this. So let's draw at some some arbitrary value of theta in between here. I guess I'll leave it. So if we're at this value of theta, we're at this value of theta. What we have to work out is the limits of integration in R. So this limit is easy. See that that's the origin. So R will definitely start at zero. For any value of theta, no matter what the value of theta is, r will start at zero, and then what will it go to? It will go to that point. Now, ooh, what is that? Well, that value of r, let's just really label it here. That value of r, this point, satisfies some trigonometry. Uh, let's just do it over here. What we have is this length is two, so we know that cosine of theta is two over r. And so that tells us we can get r in terms of theta is 2 over cosine theta. So for any theta, we have r. And you can work it out when theta is 0, r is 2, that's good. And when theta is pi on, pi on 4, um, r will be uh, uh, root 2 times 2. So it works, okay? And uh, in any case, you should understand it. And so again, this upper limit de depends on theta. I'm going to write it here. So this upper limit now is a function of theta, what we might have called, say, h2 of theta before, something like this. All right, I'm not going to leave that on there, but it's a function of theta. I'm going to write it as, and I'm going to write it as secant, just because a little bit more compact. So this is not a polar rectangle. It's um, again one of these areas, type one or type two. There you go. So let's just go ahead and now write the integral. Now theta must go on the outside, not to pi on four r goes from 0 to 2 secant theta f of r theta r don't forget the r dr d theta there and uh, you know if you can integrate this you'll get some some you'll integrate this over r and then you'll substitute in this upper limit you'll then have something that depends on theta if you can integrate it you can integrate it you'll have the answer all right i'll just end this discussion of geometry by reminding you go back and look at example sheet number one there were two questions on there both of these uh, were discussion of curves that could be written r as a function of theta if you think back to that uh, any curve that can be written r as a function of theta gives you a nice way of describing some geometry in polar coordinates and therefore a region that you could integrate over using these techniques and uh, again, go back to that example sheet and look at question seven, and you'll recall that we had this, uh, this cardioid uh, region. And even though this looks complicated, and in some ways it is complicated in the plane, if you wanted to integrate over this, let's just say what omega is. Again, you this, go back and look at this question, you know, and I'm gonna go back and look at it to see what it, what it was. Um, we can just read off from that question what that region is, essentially. Theta, um, went from naught to 2 pi. Okay, you could have ch chosen some other angle. You could have started here and gone around to there. But in any case, you can start at naught, and he just swings all the way around. And let me just do that. Again, sorry to emphasize, but it's been a while since we've done this. So, so theta, do you see I'm sweep, sweeping over theta? See that? All right. So theta goes between uh, this. And then the r starts at the origin. For any theta, this region, this blue region starts at the origin and goes out here. Let me just do this here. It goes out. It goes starts at the origin and goes out to some value of r. All right, so the limits of r are 0 to whatever you happen to give in polar coordinates. In this case, I'll just remind you, in this, the, we were told what it was. It was 1 minus sine. It was called t in the, in the, um, in the problem, but of course it's just theta. And there you go. So this is just a function of theta, and again, you could set up some integral. Do it quickly. Theta from naught to two pi, r from naught to two one minus sine theta, f of r theta, r dr theta. Very good. In the next screencast, I'll discuss a little bit more about actually doing some integration.